Captain James Cook and his first fleet have landed on the shores of Australia to officially proclaim the land as a new colony of Britain. The justification to colonise Australia was mainly due to the loss of British territories in the New World following the American Revolution. Britain could no longer imprison their criminals in America, and building new facilities at home was deemed too expensive, and so Australia was born. However, this land was not empty, and not the terra nullius that Britain claimed it to be. For the past 60,000 years, the island had been inhabited by its native population, and now the British, far more equipped for battle, were here to stay. What followed was a series of massacres in over 500 different locations around the country, where the indigenous population with hunting tools such as spears were no match for the British with guns. Eventually, the British had full control over the island, forcibly separating indigenous children from their families in what will become to be known as the Stolen Generation. But in this mod, Britain lost World War I, and their control over far-flung colonies has diminished, so I attempted to put the indigenous people back in charge of Australia, fighting off any separatists inside our union, sparking and supporting revolutions across Asia, and coming head-to-head -head against an enemy with the long-held ambitions of dominating Asia. Hi, I'm Colonel Cam, and welcome to 14 years as Indigenous Australia in Kaiser Redux. Hello guys, welcome back to Kaiser Redux. They finally reworked Australasia and it's actually good now. Really quickly before we get into the video, please like and subscribe. I'm trying to hit 50k subscribers before my birthday, which is December 6th. So we got like two months or how many months? It's, it's currently October, November. Two months to do it. I would be ever grateful. Anyway, let's get straight into the video. As I'm sure many of you guys know, I am from Australia, so... I am probably more excited than anyone else to see what this focus tree or this new new rework is. Um, obviously, we're also just not Australia. We're Australia, New Zealand, and Fiji and South Papua. Right now, we're still a colony of Britain, led by the Governor General William Birdwood. He basically just does whatever the King says. Anyway, we have a pretty bad handful of national spirits here. There's only four of them, but they're all pretty devastating. We have an oversized fleet that's actually eating into our consumer goods. Rotting corpse of the Lions plan. This is some economic plan that failed. We also got this two nations in one. New Zealand wants to become autonomous, but we're not going to let that happen. And white Australia, which basically just means we're incredibly racist. Is there, is there a balance of power? This thing is... Oh, there is! Unity between the antipodes. Separatism, and then there's federalism. Obviously, going towards entrenched federation is better, unless you want to play as New Zealand. No, no one's doing Alright, there's the second Anzac. Whoa! Dude, that... We can actually get a doctrine already. So we're gonna go Mass Assault. It's different, okay? We're playing Australasia, I'm gonna need the manpower. We're also supposed to have an election in 1937, but because there's a lot of unrest going on in our country right now, the Governor General says, you, you need to do an early election in like nine, like now. This is a right for early election. What? Are we gonna get an early election? Because it was supposed to be 19... What, who is this? Yeah, I don't know who that is. He kind of just appeared. Anyway, there were like 700 billion events and uh, I had to look through the guide every single time to know which one to pick, but I eventually got my head around. Gonna do um, SLP gains more legitimacy, legitimacy because they're the most radical. Because everyone knows in this game that more radical is more fun. I also got to do this coup in New Caledonia, so it looks like we're getting some more land. And this is actually good because it has a lot of chromium. They have so much chromium, oh my gosh. That resource is very useful to make boats, and if we're going to take on some pretty big countries in the Pacific and with large navies, we're going to need a large navy ourselves. In name of our national security, it is vital that we use any power struggle and any chance to expand our dominion over the islands of Southeast Asia and the Pacific. Um, let's claim... New Guinea, though, I think, at the start. That's fair. We're going to claim New Guinea. Becomes owner and controller of New Caledonia. Let's go. Get out of here. Look, we're going to see the divisions leave. After what felt like an extremely long time of clicking events and decisions to increase the radical left, the election was finally here. Okay, the parties stabilize ahead of the election. After months of political chaos, the major parties have finally ceased their infighting to prepare for the upcoming election. This has been a hell busy first year. This is an extremely busy first year. After weeks of canvassing and constant headlines, the elections have finished. The Nationalists, the Country Party, the All for Australia League, or the Socialist Labour Party wins in an upset. We done it. The Socialist Labour Party wins in an upset. Then the New Zealanders got their election. Uh, it doesn't really matter as much because they, we don't plan on giving them any autonomy. But I noticed something interesting. After the election, I elected the most radical left-wing government you could, and, and I noticed that my focus tree changed. Yo, did I- wait, uh, did our focus tree change? I swear our thing changed. The Communist Party seizes the reins. Yo, our thing definitely changed. Alright. 
rip apart the betrayal of the Leon's plan. Then I got this event with like seven different options. All of them were different governor generals that I had to appoint because Birdwood retired and it, I'm not going to bore you. It doesn't really matter. I just picked one. The New Zealand gov government sets out it, its agenda. We got a thousand days. I think we need to go all the way to uh, entrenched federalism and get the event in a, within a thousand days. Okay, I think that's possible. We can do that. Mass civil unrest following Jock's victory. The government has received word of large movements of the white army inside the bush with coordination between the three major para paramilitary organizations. As you can imagine, not everyone was happy about the radical left victory in Australia. So now we're fighting paramilitary forces in the bush. They think they're Ned Kelly. They are not him. <laughs> This is when I stumbled across the indigenous tree or the indigenous path for Australia. And this was so unique that I immediately knew that this is what I was going to do. Oh my gosh, this is like indigenous. Oh my gosh. Nah, that's actually crazy. I need to do that path. An end to Terra Nullius. That is so cool. I got to do this. I got to, I got to do it. Okay, anyway. Uh, re re repudate the empire's interface. The American Civil War. Why are they so weak to start? The syndicates. I wanted to support the combined syndicates, the CSA, but for some reason they started extra weak and uh, there's no point in sending volunteers. My one volunteer was going to do nothing and I don't really have that much equipment, so th there was no point. Um, trade mission to the combined syndicates. They're in the middle, uh, middle of a civil war, so I'm not going to do that. But let's go to France. I think France, because we got a non-aggression pact with them now already, so I think that's a good idea. The French accepted my trade deal, which gave me a bunch of bonuses, but I also wanted to go down the navy part of my tree. I feel like having a big navy as an island nation is very important. And then I need to get down to the focus that gets rid of oversized fleets, because that's giving me a lot of debuffs. Super event for Russia. The Tsardom unites Russia. All right. This definitely won't turn out to be something completely cursed to screw me over later in the future. I can send three volunteers. Oh, let's do that. Let's do that. I can send three now. A syndicalist revolution had broken out against the Germans in Indochina with the Indochinese Union, so I sent three volunteer units to go and help them, which is more than what I thought I could do. Wait. Spain is in the Third International. Yo. Things were looking pretty good for me right about now. The Third International were getting some decent allies, the Indochinese Union were doing well, so, you know. So I was rightfully very optimistic, but uh, that would uh, prove to be a, a mistake. You can, go, you can go screw yourself. Oh! Yo, we did it! The Indo-Chinese Union won. The revolution may be spreading successfully elsewhere, but back home, things were a bit rough. You see, the White Army, which are the nationalists, are planning to launch a coup against our government. And in order to successfully defend against the coup, we get a bunch of debuffs. Division training time, monthly population goes down, consumer goods factories 80%, no stability. We're the Republic of Australasia, we got the Eureka flag. World revolution spreads, so we're actually... Yeah, look at our party popularity. Hey, we got the Eureka flag. That's crazy. I thought they would make it like um, yellow and gold. With New Zealand in revolt and white army guerrillas fiercely resisting the changes, this turmoil has severely hampered the war effort. Now things are getting really bad. After a bit of stability we had, it, it's all starting to vanish. Uh, the Western Australia is looking to break away and uh, New Zealand, they, they are breaking away. New Zealand separates from Australasian control. It seems that the civil strife in the mainland is the rebels have found supporters in the Austra in, the, in the New Zealand government, which strenuously objects in our so to our socialist ideals and separation from the Entente. We can defect them or play as New Zealand. I'm not playing as New Zealand. They cannot honestly think to win. We're going to go to war with New Zealand, right? We also get to change our flag. We, there's so many cool options. I stuck with this option because it is basically just socialist Eureka. The communist flag without the hammer and sickle, that looks awful. I'm not going to lie, that looks like... I that looks terrible. War begins with New Zealand. Any hope there was of regaining control of, over New Zealand um, has peacefully, peacefully has evaporated. Their rebellion, are they in like, are they, they're not a part of Britain or anything. Their rebellion will be put down. And so here we are at the end of 1937 at war with New Zealand. It is quite a far distance to invade, but thankfully we have all the boats and all the manpower. <laughs> I can. Okay, so I'm going to do seven instead. As long as they don't all die, we should be okay. But if they do, I do have a save game at the start of this year. After Western Australia had a bit of a sook, my invasion was ready to go. And unfortunately, there weren't many divisions guarding the coast. Only had a maximum of four. Look at this. They're syndicalists. New Zealand have gone to syndicalism. Why are they against us, man? So New Zealand went syndicalist anyway. And now they want to make peace with us because we're both syndicalists. But it's too late now. It is no. <laughs> no, we're, we, we, oh, come on, it's too late to go back now. We're, we're landing on their beaches. After going around their divisions for a bit, I managed to get enough victory points for them to capitulate. Enough? Come on, we grab that, that should be enough. 99. Oh my gosh, just take provinces. There we go. All right, let's take their islands 
and let's take the navy back into the fold. Can we finally become Australasia again? Everyone back to Sydney. The Union of Britain came around to say hi. Well, some dude from it. Uh, we welcome him with open arms, apparently. And look, funny reference to emu war. Guys, we need to cull the emus, guys. They're taking over artillery. 24 combat with. There we go. That's a division. Nineteen thirty nine. This is where things start to get a bit interesting. We start exporting our foreign policy to the world. The, uh, the exporting of syndicalism, of capitalism and imperialism. With the situation in New Zealand being resolved, peace has returned to the Tasman. Look at all this. The Syndicalist Party will now be called Australian Council of Trade Unions. So now the radical left coalition has been dismantled and all of the radical left wing parties are just, it's a free for all. They're all fighting amongst themselves. Not violently. It's very stable. It's just, just diplomatically. Uh, amphibious tanks? because I probably will be doing a lot of naval invading. We also have this overhaul focus, which is really OP. It basically just gives us a bunch of free light cruisers, battleships, and heavy cruisers, and all this stuff. Reevaluate our alliances. Let's do that. Unlock some, oh yeah, join the international, our own faction. Join Mexico. What are you talking about, join Mexico? They got their own faction. Yo, that's actually really cool. I can do like a Mexican thing. Maybe, I do want to see, but we are going to go to war with Germany and the third international is kind of, what I'm trying to say is that we have similar goals and we're both going to go to war with Germany. I wasn't sure whether I wanted to join the third international though, or do my own faction. If I, if the third international was doing terribly against Germany, then I was not going to join a sinking ship. It is a historic event, bringing together representatives from across the socialist spectrum, spectrum to chart the course for our nation's future. So now we're going to choose which uh, party is going to have the majority of the power. And of course, I'm going to do the indigenous one because that's the most unique and original. Um, let's ex appoint centralized government so the Jin Wai Dubruk movement is strengthened again. I don't know. But this increases the, the the Aboriginal movement. So yeah. The result of the Congress. It has finally come to an end and the new legislative system of Australasia has been written. Again, yeah, that one. There we go. We did it. The unexpected victory of the Indigenous Australian Party. Who is Rex? Who is this guy? This has got to be a real dude. Hang on. I'm searching this guy out. I need to find who this guy is. This guy's got to be a real dude. Apparently he was a poet in real life and he was obsessed with Aboriginal artwork. You know, like those dot paintings. I don't know. But yeah, so now he's leading the movement. Something. The first thing we did was break the Aboriginal Protection Board, which did the opposite of protect. The LSA ultimatum. And there is the world at war. Are Russia going to move in? Look, the third international is Spain and Sweden. So you, you, with Spain, you think that's kind of a big deal. Spain aren't week. I was really leaning on joining the Third International here, but I still wanted to wait just to make sure, okay? I really wanted to make sure that they were going to win. We actually claim the other half of New Guinea as well. So declaring war on the Dutch East Indies might not be the end of the world. It is something that is I'm thinking about. Oh! Yep. The super events are like a jump scare. That happened a while ago, the, the Entente declaring war on them, and it's a proper jump scare. <laughs> Bum, ba -da -da -dun, dun dun Russian, oh, no, the two songs are overlapping. Guys, all finished. Wait, we get a capital ships overhaul? Wait, I just got two battle cruisers and four battleships. <laughs> that is so OP. We now have over a hundred boats, which is quite a bit for Australia. I think I should join the Third International. Who are they at war with? The Entente as well. Oh, are we actually gonna- oh my gosh. See, the thing about joining the Third International is that it would put us at war with the Entente, which is a bit of a drawback. But then something happened that completely changed my plans. Liberate the stolen generation. 8% stability, manpower, and change popularity of social liberalism. Oh, yo, that's the, uh, the uprising we did. With the Dutch East Indies severely weakened by a rebellion going on, they have now become my number one target. <laughs> However, my justification on German Asia finished quicker, so I declared war on them first, mostly because they're not particularly strong anymore since the collapse of their Indo-Chinese lands, and we just got to take the Solomons and then northern uh, Papua, so it, it, they're not strong. Then I could fully focus on Indonesia. There we go. All right, they got no... Oh, they, got, they got one port, actually. We better get to that. Oh, no, they don't. They don't have any port. Is this all Reich's Pact? My gosh. Oh, my gosh, it is. All these islands. Oh, my gosh. We've kind of got a good defensive line of islands around here. I'm kind of happy with that. These are... There's no point. Yeah, I wasn't bothering taking those small islands. They probably don't even have any troops there. And so now I was going to focus on Indonesia, for real. However, the rebellion collapsed before I could intervene. But it's fine. I'll beat them anyway. Let's declare war. They're a pub of the Netherlands, so we're going to be at war with the Netherlands. Doesn't matter. Let's go in.
I immediately started moving west into the rest of New Guinea and invading random islands. There's a landing, hopefully unopposed, come on. I encircled their army in the northwest of New Guinea and at the same time was making my way towards Batavia. Oh my god, we've barely gone down our doctrine. I just realized. Can I um, integrate New Guinea once I get that? Or do I need to like own it in a peace deal. I, I need to own it in a peace deal. Which is kind of annoying because I have to wait for the entire Reich's pack to collapse. And you might have noticed I'm in desperate need of getting manpower. I'm starting to run out. However, there is hope. If I could defeat the Dutch East Indies and then sign a peace deal with the Netherlands, I could get all of the manpower from Indonesia. This is a scary part. When you only attack one province and they just stack the province, it becomes like impossible to beat. Uh I landed an invasion further up the island chain to hope hopefully trying to encircle the ones below and hopefully by 1941 I would capitulate the Dutch East Indies. <laughs> That's it. I have time for one more year. I have time for one more year tonight. I'm, I'm seeing it through. Here we go. We're going to get division attack on core territory. And this is where you get 2% recruitable population. Now, I didn't realize how much manpower we would be getting in our focus tree, especially when we core Indonesia. I thought we would be struggling, so I went Mass Assault. I wouldn't have chosen Mass Assault if I knew we could do all this. We should go to Bativa. Batavia, sorry. I, everyone got mad at me for saying Bativa. It's Batavia, I know. I'm just, I can't bother pronouncing the whole thing. It's not even that hard to pronounce, I'm just an idiot. Anyway, I noticed something really sad. The Indo-Chinese Union is at war with Siam. I think the Japanese declared war on them. And unfortunately, I'm not in a position to really protect them right now, but maybe we could help them later, I don't know. More recruitable population. Justify war got time goes down. Division attack and core territory, local supplies. Man, that's so OP. Italy is whole. By who? The Syndicalists, good. That puts us at a big advantage against the Germans. Again, look, everything is looking good for the Syndicalists. There is no reason why I wouldn't join the Third International here. Okay, the Germans are losing. The White Ruthenia just capitulated, so the Germans are losing. Yo, the German, uh, the German Asia capitulated, but this went to Japan. Uh-oh. Anyway, after capturing Batavia and landing in another island, Japan did something very sneaky, okay? They they took some land from us, and this was crossing the line. Japan took that from us! We had that under our control, what do you mean? But more importantly, the war with the Dutch was over. We had conquered the Dutch East Indies and accepted their peace deal. We are content. Send them a peace treaty. Yes. Yes. It seems that Japan had the same idea and they began justifying on us too. Now this is where things start to get a bit intense. If I have any chance of standing up to Japan, I need the manpower from Indonesia. But I need political power to do the decision to get the manpower, and then I need to wait a bunch of days before I can actually core it. This means I would need to remain in control of all the Indonesian lands before Japan started invading me. Otherwise, otherwise I wouldn't be able to select the decision and not get the manpower. So I joined the Third International and waited. Now this is actually my second attempt at this year. The first time didn't go so well. I'm just going to give you some brief footage of how things went right here. It, it was not good. I ended up losing control of some Indonesian lands, couldn't get the manpower, and was eventually overrun by the Japanese Navy and armed forces. But now I come back smarter than last time, okay? I know what to do now, and I will hang on to Indonesia no matter what. Back to the start of 1942, I'm going to do a better job, because the job I just did was absolutely horrible. To hang on to Indonesia and get 150 political power. Get the manpower, so we can core it all, and the bonuses, and the factories, and anything. Even with all the insane bonuses we got with our focus tree, with our navy, it was not better than the Japanese, so I actually had to properly garrison Indonesia. And like, as long as we guard the Coral Sea, they can't invade New Zealand, because they would have to go from these islands here, and do a naval invasion through the Coral Sea. And if we can get supremacy in the Coral Sea, then they can't go anywhere. I have a feeling we're going to be able to hold on to Indonesia now. I know what I'm doing. We're going to hold on to it. And so this time I was ready. I braced myself and the Japanese declared war. Just want a little bit. Okay, he's held that. Do we? We still have the option. We just need five more political power, man. Yes! Integrate Insolidia. All right, Indonesia. We get caught on all of it. And so now all I had to do was wait another 70 days for the decision to actually take effect. But this time I wouldn't have to worry about losing land because the decision was already clicked. So if I lost some Indonesian land, it wouldn't matter. So now I was brave enough to start actually attacking. And this began with Northeast uh, New Guinea and in the Bismarck Archipelago. 20 days and we get the cause on Indonesia, despite having lost a bunch of it. 
I finally kicked them out of this island, but little would I know that this island would be the battleground or the site for the most amount of naval invasions I have ever seen done by the Japanese. They would become so obsessed of, with getting control over this island, and I would eventually have two, maybe even three whole armies having to defend it. There's the manpower. 3.26 million, let's go. How many factories? A bunch of factories. And now we're in business. We are in business now. And so there were the cause on Indonesia. Now we can actually put up a fight. We also got these elections, so we don't have to have the indigenous party anymore. So I decided to go the communist party because they were the most radical. We'll just go communist. We're on communist party. Who's in charge? Jack Kavangag. All right, we're changing the flag as well. And there's also a whole nother front that I forgot to mention. We had actually captured Singapore. They, yeah, we were capturing and holding Singapore. We began pushing out of Singapore and Siam hadn't actually been called into the war yet. So they, these divisions were all encircled. Go. Oh, we're actually doing well. We're doing much better. Yep. All right, cool. Um, now we aren't actually, we don't have to go to war with Siam. But that would not stop the invasions. In fact, there were three more invasions that just continued until the end of this year, like out of nowhere. They had somehow got supremacy over the Coral Sea and they landed in New Zealand. Oh, this has been a long game. I'm playing on speed five. I can't play on any lower speeds. It just isn't happening. Unfortunately, I forgot to put the division limiter on for this game. So everyone has unlimited divisions that they can make. And uh, coming to 1943 now, my laptop is beginning to struggle. What the heck? We remain committed to democracy. The path to socialism requires a vanguard. Negative 20% stability. Public elections will not be held. We just remove elections. Yeah, right. My attempt to save New Zealand was pitiful and quite frankly, completely failed. And then they invaded Darwin. And, th and at this point, I'm like, hang on, are we losing? But I managed to kick them out of Darwin pretty easily. There's very few ports in Australia. So once you kick them out of the first one, they, they it's, it's a long way before there's another one. I don't really ever have a chance to go towards Japan just because every time I'm solidify myself, they just invade somewhere else. I called the third international in the, into the war against the Japanese. It was probably a big mistake because that put me at war with Siam and I almost lost Singapore. Oh, big naval battle. Did we win? We lost 11 of those guys, but we sunk. We won. We won. Okay, ba battle of the Coral Sea, guys. Just like real life. Uh, actually, oh yeah. Beating that. And there's a new invasion as well, so that's fun. Yeah, just as I'm cleaning this one up, just as I'm like sorting this out, this becomes a problem. Play anymore, and there's another invasion. You can tell I'm having a bunch of fun, but the fact of the matter is that the Japanese cannot keep these invasions up forever. They're taking a lot of casualties every time we crush them, and we are crushing them, so they, they can't keep this up. This is totally fun. Can I get this guy to move and attack finally? Thank you. And then I got the strangest event I think I've ever seen. Well, maybe not, maybe not ever seen. This is Kaiser Redux, but yeah, this is this was insane. We get cause on Canada. Unite the two connected movements. Fine. You know, yeah, we uh, officially have Canada. All of Canada is a core. Okay, cool. How much longer can they last? Am I here to just outlast them? 121 divisions left. They are actually losing. Aren't they at war with China? The end of the American Civil War. Who is it? The Huey Long. This was not good. They would not help us beat Japan. So it looks like we're on our own. Back in Europe, things were looking interesting. The uh, Third International controls the entirety of the Balkans all the way up to Austria, but Germany was not falling. Being at war with Russia as well, I don't know how the Germans were holding. Anyway, I had more important issues like taking back New Zealand. Anyway, I was doing well in New Zealand, minding my own business, just taking back my country, and then, Something really unfortunate happened. Like this was, this is absolutely ridiculous. It's so annoying. Mongolia just joined the co-prosperity sphere, guys. Mongolia. What? 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 Fall of Paris? No! 
What? This was unbelievable. I genuinely had to step away from the game just because how much it screwed me over. It's like Kaiser Redux is just how much can this game screw me over. And the worst part is the third international aren't even at war with Russia. What are they doing losing to Germany already? They choked a lead where they took over the entirety of the Balkans, they got the whole of Italy, and they still can't beat Germany. Russia joining the co-prosperity sphere? What is that? What kind of bad luck do I have to have for that to happen? And so being at war with Russia now, I, I don't think I can outlast them anymore. All right. Way more divisions. Gone. Even after the Third International got all of the Balkans, Italy, They've managed to choke. They've managed to choke it. And now I'm uh, really regretting my decision to join the Third International. The Third International has the Ottoman Empire, by the way, and they're still losing to Germany. I, I, I don't understand. If France and Britain fall, that means I would go down along with them because I'm not a major, so I would be in the peace deal. There is quite literally nothing I can do except send my navy over to the English Channel and hope that that would be enough to stop them invading Britain. On some better news, I managed to push into Bangkok. Uh, I, I, I wouldn't capitulate Siam in the end, but it, I mean it was something. <laughs> I actually have convoys now. I'm producing them. Believe it or not, I like upped my production of convoys, as you can see. I got two. All of my dockyards are going towards convoys because that was that's what I was down, and that's I think that's why my divisions weren't going. France just capitulated, man. They actually are losing a German. Oh, I forgot how bad Germany. I mean, how bad the internationals doing. Despite the inevitability of losing, I would continue to make encirclements and drain Japanese manpower. But with the realization that their ally in China would take over all of it and then core all of China, there was genuinely no hope. Let him. Let him. Dude, I look at uh, the, the, the invasion that we just crushed. That happened like maybe 30 seconds ago. Like in real life, that happened maybe 30 seconds ago. Now we're already getting. Look how much they've already spread out for this invasion. It's ridiculous. Dude, how many casualties have they, ta have they taken? 7 million. And they're just still going. It's training another 60 divisions, as you do. Might as well. What, are they going to do a fourth one up here now, too? I might have to bring another army over. I made a joke about they're going to do a fourth one up here, and guess what? They're doing a fourth one up here. They actually are. And guess what? I crushed all four of those invasions, but the Japanese would still not stop. That would not be enough. They would not take enough, enough casualties ever. I'm sure this time it'll work, Japan. I'm sure this time it'll work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This time, nah, for sure. This time. I'm not a major. If Britain gets invaded, it's over. Like, I lose. And by 1949, I genuinely gave up. I just let the game run and walked away from my computer. And I, of course, I wasn't there to defend the invasion, so I eventually would lose. But I was going to lose anyway, because Britain would eventually get invaded and capitulate. Yeah, nah, I'm not playing beyond here. This is ridiculous. Alright, that's it. But that would not be it. Because I wanted to try one last ditch attempt at a good game, and that would mean going back to a save from 1939. Back to the point where I was deciding whether to join the Third International or create my own faction. And this time, I wanted to create my own faction to see what would happen. The idea was to create an Oceanic International with me, Indochina, and the Indian Commune. Unfortunately, there was no way that I could get anyone into my faction, and there was no way to even cheat to do it. The best I could do was guarantee the Indo-Chinese Union, but even then, the game would find a way to screw me over, like put the Indo-Chinese Union at war against a country in India, and then they would never ever be able to be guaranteed, because you can't guarantee a country that is at war. And the Indonesian uprising is completely random, so I could never predict when it was going to happen, and so I would try and rush it, and then when I got the, to the peace deal, they would take half the land, and I couldn't, I would have a truce with them, it'd just be annoying. Unfortunately, I think I just got really unlucky with my games this week. I don't know why. Kaiser Redux has always screwed me over, but then I'll remember to do the division limiter because my game doesn't run slowly. However, there was this cool button, the Pan Pacific Union, and I wanted to know what happened when it was clicked, and that was if I annexed Canada. Oh, I can just do it. Oh, it's literally just Canada. So that's how you do the Pan Pacific Union. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. The next video is TNO, so leave some comments suggesting a country for me to play in TNO, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Oh,